Hello and welcome to the 70th episode of the Sock Funny Knit and Fit video podcast. This is Bandit. Hi Bandit. Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon. This is what Bandit does all day. <laughs> he has a very hard life. What you doing puppy? Are you sleeping? Are you trying to sleep and mommy's bothering you? He says yes. Get that camera out of my face. Let me sleep. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome. I am Kimberly, also known as Sock Bunny. Today is Thursday, January 24th, 2013. This is take two. I recorded the podcast. It was fabulous. Best episode ever. And then there were sound issues. So guess what? We get to do it again, which probably means I'm going to be like, did I say that already? Half the time through the podcast, but that's okay. It's one of those things that happens. Podcasting. It's a glamorous life. <laughs> anyway, I am Sock Bunny on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, iTunes, YouTube, and Blip.TV. My show notes are on the side of the screen, so I will be looking to the side a lot. Um, welcome to any new viewers. And thank you for giving me a shot. I hope you like what you see and you will come back. Thank you to any returning viewers. You must be crazy if you like this. And uh, thank you to everybody who has messaged me this week. I am a little bit behind. I'm on Ravelry messages. I hope to remedy that by the end of the week. Um, thank you to everybody who uh, is friends with me on Plurk. You guys are a great support system. I really, really appreciate it. And... I think that's it. What, puppy dog? Oh, come here. You want to come here? Do you want to come here? I hope he doesn't eat out. He's probably going to want out. Go lay down. Go lay down. Come here. You want to come here? Oh, do you love your mommy? Oh my gosh, are we going to get Bandit to come over here? Come here. Let me move my knitting out of the way. I might get a second look. Come here. Come here. Oh, he's stretching. Hi. Hello, Poppy. Hello. Hi. Do you want this to be called the Bandit Show? This is the Bandit Show. Greyhounds. You could walk them and pet them at the same time. Um, I do have podcast buttons. I didn't bring one over, but I do have podcast buttons. If you would like one, send me a message and you can uh, send it. Send me $2 either, either snail mail or you can send me um, $2 via PayPal and uh, just send me a message and I'll tell you the address for that. I do have a shop update going on this Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. I was having them at 8 but I decided to move it to earlier in the day and um, somebody is really like having his neck rubbed. Oh yes. He loves to have his neck rubbed. <laughs> no. He wants to smell my breath. He does that every, every, every single day. He smells my breath. <laughs> He's a crazy dog. Um, so I do want to show you the stuff I have for the shop update. First, I want to show you something that did not turn out very well. I mean, it's okay. I like it, sort of. Well, I can't decide if I like it or not. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and put it in the shop, but if it doesn't sell, then I may just over-dye these or use them for something, you know, myself. But anyway, this is a color that I was trying to, I, I'm calling it spin class, but it's probably not going to be the final version of spin class. It's orange and turquoise and black. And eh, it's not gorgeous. It's not everybody's cup of tea. You might like it. I actually would like to have a pair of socks knit with this. I know that sounds crazy, but I like crazy socks. So I was trying to duplicate what it looks like in spin class. Uh, because the spin class I go to, the room is dark, and then they turn on a black light, and they the walls are black, and they've splattered the walls with um, fluorescent paint. So that's the look I was going for. It's not what I achieved. So this is going to be a prototype, but it's not the final colorway. Sort of ugly. It's a face only a mother could love. <laughs> so I am going to list it. Um, I'll probably put it in the sales section. As it did turn out exactly the way I wanted it to. But, you know, those things happen. And I'm sure that other dyers can attest to that. Um, let me move that out of the way. We don't want the ugly showing through the whole podcast. 
<laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Oh, other stuff that I do like how it turned out. Let's show you that. The lighting in here is not so great. Um, so some of the colors are not going to show up perfectly, but um, I have two col two colorways in DK weight, which is a superwash merino. The first one, and I'm in the process of rescaining, so some of these are in cakes. This one is called Lucky in Love, and it's a uh, a um, St. Patrick's Day themed colorway. So it's called Lucky in Love. And then the second one I am calling I Will Always Love You, and that is a Valentine's theme colorway. And these are in DK weight. There will be two of each of these in the shop on Sunday. And then I also did a custom colorway in a colorway I am calling um, Midnight Forest. And it's not showing up. The forest green is way prettier in real life than it's looking here. This is for a custom job. This is uh, two skeins of DK, but I did do three skeins of sock weight in that same colorway. Let's see if I can get it to show up very well. You're not really seeing the forest green show up in this lighting, but it's way prettier in real life. And of course, this will be reskeined before it's put into the shop. I dyed on Tuesday and it's Thursday and the yarn is still damp. So I think what I'm going to start doing is the first day I'm going to leave the stuff out on the back porch and the second day I'm going to bring it in and put fans on it and see if that helps it. I think it's just the humidity here is so high that things are not drying. Um, so that's one sparkly yarn. I also have this is a repeat colorway in the sparkly yarn. Um, this one's in the process of being reskeined. This is my Florida Flamingos. And it's more pink than what you're seeing here. It's like a light pink, a dark pink, and then black on sparkly yarn. And I will have three skeins of that. I will also have three skeins of the Midnight Forest. And then I have three skeins each of, this is in the non-sparkle yarn. This is called Birds of a Feather. I have three skeins of that and three skeins of Greyhounds on the Beach, which is beachy colors. So that shop update will be Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. I am going to start doing uh, regular shop updates pr almost every Sunday. Maybe not, maybe not every Sunday, but I'm going to aim for doing small updates uh, to start off with every Sunday and see how it goes. I have been talking to my husband for the last couple of months about um, what I want to do with this. Do I want to keep doing it as a hobby or maybe take it to the next step? I haven't worked... Uh, in the last few months because of my anxiety levels. Um, I normally work as a medical transcriptionist. Uh, that's a, actually a pretty um, high stress job, believe it or not. Even though you're working from home, you have to have at least a 99% accuracy. And what they do is they pull random reports and listen to them and then grade you. And you have to co consistently have at least 99% for most companies. Um, and, you know, different things that you do wrong on a report will be more or less percentage-wise. Like, say they say if and you typed of, that's a small percentage. But let's say you type a drug name incorrectly, that's a big percentage wrong. So um, it's a pretty high-stress job, and I guess it's just not the right kind of stress that I need in my life right now. Um, so I've been having anxiety attacks for a few months. So we've decided that I am going to try doing the yarn dyeing and fiber dyeing as a part-time job and see how it goes. If it works out, good. If it doesn't, that's fine, but we're just going to give it a shot. Um, so we have a short-term goal, meaning like within the next six months to a year, that I would like to sell 100 skeins a month. That is not any that anything that I expect to happen overnight by any means. I mean, I know I have to pay my dues. I know I have to get the word out there, all that kind of stuff. I'm actually really excited about that. And doing the dying has actually helped my depression and anxiety because it's given me something fun to look forward to. And even though it's physical labor to dye the yarn, it's actually fun. And it gives me something to look forward to, and it's actually been helping my depression and anxiety. So we're going to try this, see what happens. Um, but I at least I'm going to do it for a year. The minimum I'm going to do it is a year. And um, 
we'll see what happens. So um, I'm pretty good at marketing and that kind of stuff. So I think I am anyway. <laughs> And, uh, so we'll see what happens. So, um, it's funny. Um, uh, well, this is not funny, but Joe had to go to the emergency room Tuesday night. I took him to the emergency room because he scratched the cornea of his eye and I took him to the emergency room because he was in so much pain and I was sitting there knitting some socks out of some hand dyed yarn and the nurse said something and then she had actually heard of Etsy and she asked me if I was selling on Etsy and all that kind of stuff and she's the friend of a knitter she doesn't knit but she's the friend of a knitter and Joe was just like there are knitters everywhere and I think that affirmed in his mind that this is not a crazy idea for us to pursue this so um, he's being very supportive of that and I'm thankful for that and we'll just see what happens um, by the way, Joe's eye is doing a lot better. He went to the eye doctor yesterday morning, Wednesday morning. Um, the hospital had put him on some eye drops. The doctor put him on a different eye drop, and he texted me a little bit ago and said his eye is doing much better today. So he's already feeling a lot, lot better. And thank you to uh, everybody on Plurk for your well wishes about that. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. So the, the Etsy shop is at sockbunnystudios.etsy.com. And again, the shop update will be Sunday at 2 o'clock. And I don't want the podcast to be about the shop. I want the podcast to be like it's always been. I will be showing what I've dyed, but that is not the reason for this podcast. And it's not the focus of this podcast. The focus of this podcast is knitting and fitness. So, And it will forever be that way. And if you think I'm getting out of control, you tell me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about charity, fitness, finished objects, works in progress, knit and crochet alongs, spinning, look what I made, stash enhancement, tips and tricks, favorite things, and what I am watching and reading. So let's talk about charity. Um, as I mentioned before, my older daughter, Sarah, is studying to be a Catholic missionary. She goes to a school in Rhode Island, and they live completely on donations and charity. And so she expressed that they, she and her classmates, would like some yarn. I've given them a ton of yarn, and several viewers have sent her yarn, and thank you guys for that. Uh, she says that now, in particular, they need DK or worsted weight in semi-neutral colors, uh, in nicer acrylics or washable wools. So if that's something you have lying around, no pressure. If you want to send her something, ask me, and I will give you her address, and um, uh, you can send it directly to her. And I really, really appreciate anybody who has already asked me or will ask me for her address. I'm not going to keep mentioning this forever. Uh, maybe I'll just mention it one more time next week, and then I won't say anything and see you know, what comes of that. I am behind on my uh, Ravelry messages, so if you've messaged me in the last few days, I haven't gotten back to you, but I know you're there. Uh, let's see. Um, my focus for charity knitting this year is going to be hats. I do want to do at least one or two hats for um, Halos of Hope. They are collecting, they want to collect at least 300 themed and 300 regular hats. The theme is stars and they're for um, kids ages 5 through 21. They want hats that are warm, festive, and fun. So I'm going to be knitting at least a hat or two for that. And then the rest of the year I'm going to be focusing on knitting hats for Pinellas Hope. And that is a local homeless shelter. And I will be taking those hats over in November or December. I can't remember now. We'll talk about that coming up. But um, I am going to have a drive later this fall where I'm collecting hats again for Pinellas Hope. So keep that in mind if that's something that interests you. And I hope I'm not forgetting anything because, like I said, this is tank two. Um, fitness. We do have a fitness along going in the Sock Bunny Ravelry group. Any day that you work out at least 30 consecutive minutes, you can post it in the thread. At the beginning of each month, I draw a winner from the previous month. And you will win either a $5 giftable pattern on Ravelry or yarn or fiber of your choice that I will dye in up to three colors. Or you could pick something that's already in the Etsy shop. Um, in January, we are having a fitness poster uh, contest. So if you have a fitness poster or you want to make one, you have until the end of January, January 31st, to post a picture. It needs to, uh, to be eligible. It does need to have 
um, goals and rewards. So you need to make sure that your entry has that. If you've posted something and you haven't posted what your goals and rewards are, you need to go back and edit your post so that it has that because um, that is part of the deal. Um, so the winner is going to get either a shawl pin made by um, Sarah's husband, Matt, from the um, Apple Blossom and You podcast or a $5 or less giftable pattern on Ravelry. And the reason I'm giving you the option is not everybody needs shawl pins, so I'm letting you choose which one of those things you would like. Finished objects. I have a finished object that you've seen before. It was half done, and this is the whoops, fish dishcloth. This is from um, a pattern by Chris Knits. It's her tropical dishcloths, and um, you might remember that I have knit five of these. They are for a friend of my, one of my friend's daughter. She is stationed in Hawaii uh, in the Coast Guard, so I made these five cloths for her, and I'll show them to you again. I'm going to weave in the ends and mail them out. They'll go in the mail next week. So there is a there are eight patterns total. I did five of them. There's a seahorse and a bucket and pail. My favorite is the <clears throat> palm tree. And then we have sailboat. And then lastly, the fishy that you saw. So those will be going in the mail to her next week. And that was a really fun project. I love the bright colors. You know that. <clears throat> uh, works in progress. I did just so start designing a shawl. It's going to be a half pie shawl. And the theme is called Bee Leaf. B as in B-E-E -E and Leaf as in L-E-A-F. L-E-A-F. Bee Leaf Half Pie Shawl. And the yarn I dyed, I dyed in a colorway specifically for this, and it will be available. In, I actually have one skein already in the Etsy shop, and there will be more once the pattern is released. This is called the Bee Leaf Colorway. This is the Half Pie Shawl. I can't show you any more than that because I want to keep it as a surprise, but I did start that this week. That will be a paid pattern, but I'm going to take the cue from other podcasters and give you a coupon code for a couple of weeks when it first comes out so that you can get it for free. And then after that, it will be a paid pattern. Uh, let's see. Oh, I unearthed a really old UFO that I totally forgot existed. This is a pair of socks that I actually finished the first sock over a year ago. I looked on my Ravelry projects, and I think it said January 8th I finished the first sock. This is the um, Cadence pattern by Very Busy Monkey on Ravelry. And the sock yarn was given to me by Sam from the Knit Run Dig podcast. So I call these my Knit Run Dig socks. So this sock has been done a year. That is so sad. The second sock I had cast on and had done one pattern repeat. I picked it up and figured out where I was. And I don't know why this went into hibernation. It wasn't intentional. I don't know what the yarn is. I don't remember. And I didn't put it in my projects page. Bad podcaster. Um, maybe if I go look at my old show notes, it might be in there. I'll have to do that. Anyway, so these I am knitting on my square collage DPMs. It's hard to tell, but these are square knitting needles. And I really like them. They're very comfortable to knit with, but I do have to go a needle size up. So normally I knit my socks on ones, so I'm knitting with two DPNs because um, my gauge is different. So like say if I was going to normally knit with a seven, I would knit with an eight because that's just how it affects my knitting. So these are back in rotation. I totally forgot about them. I was cleaning my uh, craft room and I found them and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I totally forgot. So that, again, is the Cadence uh, Sock Pattern by Very Busy Monkey. <sighs> oh, Sexy Librarian Sweater. That is, where did I put it? Okay, here it is. This is the, uh, the pattern is Classic 150 Lace Up Pullover. This is what it's going to look like. Um, I start, it's a bottom up. Uh, knit in pieces. I started at the bottom and knit up to here and I actually made this two inches longer than what they called for in the pattern because um, I would not like wearing a sweater that was this short so it's probably going to be more like down here which is more where I would like it. Uh, the yarn I am using is Tatami or Tatami. 
I need to look up how to pronounce that. Um, Tweed DK is a cotton acrylic blend. I really, really like it. So you can see I finished the bottom portion of the sweater and started the top part. And I'm very much enjoying knitting with this yarn. Um, like I said, it's a cotton acrylic blend. It's got these little tweedy pink pieces in there. And you know I love pink and green. And I am knitting it on, uh, these are Knitter, Knitter's Pride wooden needles. And I love these needles. They are my official favorite needles. I love them more than any other needles. Everybody likes different things. That's what I like. Um... That's it. I think that's all I want to say about that. There's no deadline for that. I do want to knit six sweaters this year. That's a goal. Whether I reach it or not, we'll see. I'm just going to have fun and do what I can. There are a couple of sweater knitting classes on Etsy, not Etsy, Craftsy, that I want to take. Craftsy.com. If you haven't heard of it, it's like an online site for people who do crafts, but it's tutorials. Uh, there's a couple of Fair Isle sweater patterns classes on there that I really really want to take so I'm waiting for them to go on sale and when they go on sale I'll be taking them and knitting them and I already told my hubby about that so oh, let's see okay next we have the sparkle free for all which is going on with Lauren from the Lem Knit Crochet Designs podcast and it's any sparkly yarn any pattern and I am, uh, you can post the finished, hi cutie pie, you can post the finished object in her group and my group. I am knitting a plain garter stitch scarf in sparkly hand spun. Let's see if you can see the sparkles. And this is where I was last week. I call this a hickey jiggy. Some people call it a doodad or a marker or whatever. I call it a hickey jiggy. And, um, hi cutie. He wants me to give him a treat. This is the uh, sparkle yarn that I am using. This is hand spun. The deadline for this is January 31st. You can post it in her group and in my group. The tag for that is LEM, L-E-M, S-B for sock bunny, and then sparkle. No, go lay down. Mommy's not going to give you a treat until she's done podcasting. You're going to have to wait. Let's see if that, hap that actually happens. He could be pretty cute. No, go lay down. Go lay down. Go lay down. When I'm done, I'll give you one. Um, oh, I said the T word, didn't I? <laughs> you heard me say the T word. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? <laughs> Are you going to bark at me? Are you going to bark at me? He's being very adorable. He's going to make me get up. Ugh, hold on one second. I got to get up or he'll never leave me alone. Okay, so uh, entertain yourself by singing a song. <laughs> Okay, come on, baby. Come here, come here. Whoops. There you go. All right, there you go. Okay, enjoy. Okay, I'm back. Okay. He can be very persuasive. Okay, uh, let's see. After that, we have, uh, we also have a variegated sock knit along going on with Denise from the Knitting Den, and that ends on January 31st also. Um, and now, see, I can't remember what I've said about that already. <sighs> anyway, I left those. I left those socks in the car. Rachel is in college and she has my car today, so I cannot show you the socks, but they, I am on the second sock, almost done with the gusset decreases. It's yarn that I dyed in Johnny Appleseed colorway, which is red, green, and brown. <sighs> I think that's all I want to say about that. So, um, the Johnny Appleseed socks, uh, that runs to the end of January. I said that. It's hard to do this twice in a row because you can't remember what you've said and what you haven't said. So I don't remember what I've said. <laughs> if I forgot any sit to say anything, I'll say it next week. So, um, where are we in our notes here? Okay, I've been doing some brain. Oh, the tag for the um, knit along for the variegated socks is KD for Knitting Den, SB for Sock Bunny, and Socks. And I mentioned it's with Denise from the Knitting Den. See, I don't remember. Okay. 
I've been doing some brainstorming about what I want to do for the rest of the year as far as knit along goes. Now this is flexible. And if you are a podcaster and you want to have a dual knit along with me on top of anything that I'm doing here, I am more than happy to do that. I love doing dual podcast knit alongs. I think they're fun. Now he wants out. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bandit, you're so annoying. back. He slept, he slept through the first version. I guess that was too much to hope for for the second. Okay. Um, so these are my knit alongs that I'm having this year, but like I said, this is flexible. So, um, running February 1st through March 15th is the sci-fi knit along that I'm going to co-host with Sam from the knit run dig podcast. It can be a sci-fi pattern or it could be a sci-fi yarn colorway or whatever you want it to be um, in your finished object uh, post just post what you, the sci-fi reference is in case we might not know it then in um, oh and I'm gonna have an Easter swap coming up I'm gonna start taking signups on February 1st I'm gonna take signups through February 21st on February 22nd I am going to assign partners you will have an option of sending or receiving either Christian or non-Christian or let's say religious or non-religious items. It'll be up to you what you want to send and receive. And I will try to hook people up with each other that have similar interests in that area. The, uh, I, the package is going to be one Easter themed knit item and $10 worth of goodies. And you need to have the item to them before Easter. And Easter is March 31st, so plan accordingly. Get it done early. I know life happens. I'm not saying that we're going to be total, totally inflexible. But the ideal is for them to have the Easter item before Easter. That would be helpful. Uh, so that's going to be going on in March. And then... From March 16th until the end of May, I'm going to have a knit and crochet along where you can make anything you want out of hand spun. It could be hand spun that you did or that somebody else did that you got from them. I feel like I'm talking fast. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then in June, July, and August, I'm going to have something called Sock It To Me Summer where we're going to knit socks. And uh, then in September, October, November, that's when I'm going to have the hat drive for Pinellas Hope. And then December, I will take off uh, having anything planned, but I might, you know, co-host another pot with another podcaster or something like that. So, like I said, that's not written in stone, but that's what the plan for the upcoming year is. Then let's talk about spinning. I did finish spinning. Uh, this is four ounces of a BFL. And it is not showing true to life. It's more purple than what you're seeing here. But this is a colorway called Purple Mountain Majesty that I dyed. And I am going to put this in the Etsy shop in case you're interested in purchasing it. It's prettier in real life than it's looking here, I think, anyway. Uh, this is a non-superwash BFL, so it is feltable. So that's my spinning. Uh, the next thing that's going on the wheel is what I showed last week. It's the... Um, Polworth that was dyed in the green colors that I got in the indie swap. Um, look what I made. I have something to show. I mentioned a few weeks ago that Joe's dad passed away and he was up in um, West Virginia, you know, visiting his mom. And his mom gave him a few things that belonged to his dad to bring home. Well, one of the things that he brought home is a cross stitch that I made for his dad back when Joe and I were, I think we were engaged, but we weren't married yet. Um, it's a Steelers cross stitch. And um, I made this probably 23 or 24 years ago, and it's been hanging in his dad's office this whole time, which is very, very sweet. So uh, Joe is now going to have it hanging in his office, which I think is really cool. Um, and I just think it's really sweet that uh, his mom gave it to him to have. That I thought that was really, really nice. So that is a counted cross stitch that I did a long time ago. 
stash enhancement. Um, I did uh, get, I did win a few things over the last few weeks, and they all seem to have uh, arrived at the same time. So I wanted to show them to you. First, um, Kathy from the Knit Nerd podcast, she had a knit along, um, crochet along for the Red Scarf Project, and I crocheted a red scarf for charity. She had three people finish, so she donated, uh, she gifted patterns to all three of us. I picked out something fabulous, fabulous to me. <laughs> when you see this, you will not be surprised. Um, I showed it to Rachel, and she was like, oh my gosh. So here it is, without further ado. It is the flamingo scarf, and it is a scarf shaped like a flamingo. Is that perfect for me or what? This is going on the needles very soon, and I am going to uh, make it out of cotton so that I can wear it to Bush Gardens when I visit the flamingos. <laughs> you have no idea how happy this makes me. <laughs> Speaking of flamingos, um, Heather WB came to town and on Saturday, and she and I went to Ikea, and I will talk more about Ikea later, but while we were there, I saw a display that took my breath away, literally, and they had blankets with flamingos on them, and I haven't opened the blanket up yet, but you can see this is what it's going to look like, and when I saw it, I was super, super, super excited, and of course had to buy it. It's a, you know, just one of those fleece blankets, and this is going to be my birthday present from John John, because you know my bunny John John, my stuffed bunny, he buys me presents for Christmas and my birthday, so I cannot open this until my birthday, but I am super, super, super excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love flamingos, in case you haven't noticed. Um, anyway, so thank you, Kathy, for the pattern. I really, really love it. Um, I also won from Daniela of the Caffeinated Knitting Podcast. She had a knit along for the BFF Cal, which is a free pattern on Knitty, and I won one of the prizes. She had several prizes, and this yarn is so perfect for me. Can you believe it? It's lime green. And this is the SAP 2012 exclusive color from Miss Babs. And I don't know how she gave this yarn up because it is fantastic. I love it so, 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 so much. So that is uh, from Daniela. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, next. Um, oh, when Heather visited, she gave me a belated Christmas present. And the bag that she gave it to me is gave the stuff to me and would would have been gift enough because I love it. It is a bag that looks like a purse with a kitty cat. <laughs> and I think it'd be awesome if I used this bag to my purse, don't you think? Yeah, Rachel would really want to be seen with me. <laughs> Look how cute that is. Thank you, Heather. But inside, yes, there's stuff inside. There's more. This is some um, wool gathering October 2012 fiber adventurer fiber club and it is Polworth which is my favorite fiber to spin and look at those colors oh my gosh so this is going to be the second thing on my spinning wheel I love it so so much and she also gave me some really cute stitch markers you can never have enough stitch markers right so thank you Heather and thank you for putting up with me at Ikea especially when I was like oh when I saw the flamingos. So she wasn't really surprised though, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. And then I was gifted a pattern, although I haven't printed it yet, so I'll print it and show it next week. Robin, who is so busy knitting on Plurk, bought me a pattern called Geometric Lace from Baby Love Brand Designs. And I will print it off and show you next week. But I want to say thank you to Robin. Um, I also want a pattern from... Um, uh, an audio podcast that I listen to called The Hollywood Knitter, which if you're not listening, you should be. And I won a pattern, oh, what is her name? Allison, I think. Uh, I won a pattern from her, which I will show next week also. So thank you guys. So this has been a week of winning for me. Um, tips and tricks. This tip and trick involves one of my favorite things in the whole world. Coca-Cola. Now, yes, today is divisible by three. So I could drink one of these, but, and I will be drinking these, not all today, but what I'm going to do with these, I saw this idea somebody posted, uh, that, and they had done it and they had seen the idea originally on Pinterest 
uh, is you take your, your Coke bottles, which I love these adorable little bottles, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, I'm going to wash them out, and I'm going to use them as a centerpiece and put flowers in them. Is that so me? And is that sort of country ish not really colonial but I just think it's an adorable idea so I am going to be putting some flowers in coke bottles and uh, that's my tip or trick of the week if you have some uh, old bottles or bottles that you're not quite sure what to do with you can use them to put flowers in wow wasn't that exciting <laughs> um let's see okay my favorite thing which is also another tip and trick is um, Ikea. I've talked about Ikea before about how much I love it. I think the doggy needs it. I'm gonna wait till he cries though. He needs to spend some time outside anyway. Anyway, um, Ikea has artwork and um, I have bought artwork there before. This pillow in fact is from Ikea and I love it. And we have some lampshades that we've got from Ikea and all kinds of stuff. They don't just sell furniture. So anyway, we were in the artwork section. They just remodeled our store here in Tampa, and they had some new artwork that I really liked, and I almost bought it. They had this print, because I'm redoing my living dining room kitchen in colonial America, Americana type stuff, um, you know, like, uh, it's hard to explain, stuff they would have like around the Revolutionary War type stuff is what I want. So. This sort of fits in the theme, and I haven't decided if I'm going to put this in a dining room or on the back porch, but this is a print that they had that I really liked. They had the print for $10, and I almost got it, but I didn't because I was like, well, maybe they'll have it on sale. I'm trying to get it without a glare. Not there. Um, and then when I was, they have a clearance section. I didn't pick it up at that point, so I went down to the clearance section, and they had it framed for $10. So I got the picture and the frame. For ten dollars, but I just think this is very uh, cute because it's sort of architecture type looking, but it's a rocking chair. So this is either going to go in the dining room or on the back porch. I haven't decided yet, but I love it. So my my additional tip is when you go to IKEA, check their clearance section because they do have. If you're, I don't know if all IKEAs have it. They probably do, uh, but they have like um, discontinued. The items, but also items that maybe were floor models that they don't need anymore, which is what I think is the case with this one. And so they have linens, they have dishware, they have furniture, they have posters, they have all kinds of stuff there. So I check it out every single time I go there. So yay, I got a frame and a print for what I would have normally paid for just the print. Um, okay, so that's it for, I think everything. I'm really sorry if I forgot anything on this second run through. Um, I think I got everything though from what I could see. So um, what I am watching and reading? Nothing. <laughs> I haven't been watching really any TV. Um, nothing on Amazon Prime. I haven't been reading anything. I have been trying to catch up on podcasts. I'm really behind on a lot of podcasts. So I've been trying to catch up on those. I probably will never catch up, but I gotta at least try. So I think that's about it. Um, like I said, if I forgot anything, I'll mention it next week. So on behalf of me and Bandit, the mostly sleeping greyhound who loves treats, thank you for watching. Have a great week and keep on crafting. Bye.